and we are recording again. Hello. Hello. So this is uh, one of the writing corner chats. The first one we are having in 2018. Mm -hmm. Again, fueled by pure laziness because we were already on camera. We were trying. We were attempting to record a work session on one of the short stories where we managed to stay extremely vague about everything <laughs> 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 and uh, we figured uh, we could elaborate on the new year haze a little bit more so what you've been up to Nox? Um, uh, that's a very good question <laughs> 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 yeah so we, we had Christmas and for Christmas I've I've got a, f a friend of the family who always buys me stationery. So I got new notepads, new pens, new pencils, new all the all the good stuff basically. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I set about improving my notes. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can just about see them on camera. I've added some notes to the cork boards using mm -hmm. my new pin that I got for Christmas. New stationery is always welcome. And, Shiny. Uh, uh, there's new post-it notes and all sorts. So. I just, I don't know, I was just, over the Christmas period and New Year's, I was tidying up a lot of the stuff, <laughs> and because we've been working together for so long now, a lot of the background stuff <laughs> has sort of been verified, there's more clarity to it, like with, like for example, the story we were just working on, Destiny, mm -hmm. we know about the symbiote and that kind of stuff now, and because of that, it's got me a clearer idea of certain things I want to do mm. in Split Personality 3, for example. So, oh. yeah, so it's cleared up a lot of... Because in Split Personality 3, I was just going to go in with the whole, oh, it's woo-woo magic. But now <laughs> we've actually got, uh, uh, like, point, plot point that we can lock onto and use. So, I mean, thing, things like that, having clarity about... That is just a very small example, because obviously there's been a whole deal of stuff that we've worked on over the past few years and sort of scrubbed up the Chaos Nova lore as it were so the larger arc has been tidied up a little bit and I've sort of clarified how certain people have bought into it and that kind of thing but it hasn't been serious work and I think that's <laughs> that was probably the problem it was like oh we, we've had time off and <laughs> we back and then getting back into it it's just like oh my god what am I doing you know so. yes what are words? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we, we decided to take some time off work uh, before Christmas and I think it was necessary because my brain was flat on the ground and uh, I was unable to do pretty much anything and also there were all sorts of parties and, and functions where I had to go. But getting back into the work routines <laughs> is has made up for a whole challenge in itself I think I think we needed to do it the, the work schedule would have been too disrupted mm -hmm. if we'd have tried to work through Christmas and also it's important to take a break every now and then um, just to sort of recharge your batteries and I think yeah it is a slog getting back into the work but I think it's more important that we had the break as well. Yeah, yeah. Not that I had uh, much uh, idle time during the break. I was actually playing a lot of stuff and I was uh, playtesting the uh, Lost Alpha. Uh, or like run running some of the beta versions. And the guys uh, released a, uh, a new version. This is, uh, Lost Alpha is a uh, large scale standalone mod for Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. And, uh, and a few years ago, uh, I was among the playtesters. And right now, uh, the guys have been releasing uh, the developer's cut. And uh, and I managed to test some of it as well. So before the holidays, I was actually deep into the zone. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I don't think I played much over Christmas. Mm. I I was I was hawking the Steam Christmas sale. <laughs> I had ice I had Icewind Dale open, 
and it never went below 66 <laughs> percent. by the way it never dropped uh so i was just like on the last day of the sale i was like right bite the bullet just get it and i got it it wasn't so expensive like i was being a bit of a tight ass. but the the thing is you buy the thing on steam and then a couple of hours later there'll be flash sales and it'll be like 88 <laughs> percent off or whatever 90 percent off um so I waited until the last minute <laughs> because I didn't want to experience that. Yes, like if you know you can get a better skimpier deal and you're not making a proper effort to get it, then that's that's some special <laughs> special kind of anxiety right there. Mm, yeah. So in the end, we got it and that was all good. But I haven't I haven't really been playing a whole lot over Christmas. I I'd... I started a game uh, and I created a character. But uh, it's one of those uh, games that requires uh, reading and focusing and, and all that. And I, I only poked around a little bit. I, I realized that uh, the, the main value there will be that uh, we shall be playing as a group. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I decided to leave most of my Icewind Dale energy for group play. <laughs> Uh, I, me and Andreas have been talking about it in the Discord and it's it's good to just throw character ideas back and forth mm. and I think in a way that sort of helps the writing as well um, yeah. like the Dungeons and Dragons character creation like I had to come up with this whole backstory for my character and that kind of thing so that was, that was kind of neat just a nice little bite size <laughs> outside of all the other projects yeah so that was cool yeah, some something that something that you can just do without worrying the output. Like, you can just just create a character. You don't have to worry about how you uh, describe it to other people or how you will present it uh, uh, in a social media post or whatever. <laughs> or, I think the or, or whether or or if you if you will share the details, uh, will they be horribly misleading, etc. <laughs> I think the nice thing about the game environment is that you can ham it up as well an mm. awful lot. So yeah, uh, this it's really low stakes, <laughs> really low, which is you know no pressure. I like that. <laughs> no pressure gaming is good. <laughs> I, I there is one game I've been playing the last couple of days, um, only for an hour, or only for a couple of hours or so mm. at a time. Because um, I keep getting distracted and go off and do other stuff. Um, Banished. I keep coming back to Banished. That game is oh, so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. It's such a fantastic game. I don't know why I keep coming back to it, but I do. I think it has this sort of meditative thing. The, yeah, possibly. The, uh, well, it's Banished real time. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was real time. So it's even, I think, this sort of... Uh, meditative strategizing building thing is even stronger with turn-based uh, strategy like the the other day i felt like uh, like i was missing my uh, uh, call to power sessions uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, there is one uh, game that i started a few years ago and uh, i was about to finish it I mean, I was I was quite at the end of it, and uh, then I reorganized some files, and I thought that I had uh, lost saves, but then I found them again, <laughs> and, and then I picked the game up again, and then I blundered up some choices, uh, depriving me from the from the victory conditions that I was aiming for. But in the process, I learned that the victory conditions that I'm aiming for are actually doable. So, I I might uh, uh, I might uh, record some episodes from the end game. Someday. Nice. Very cool. I remember the Call to Power adventures when mm -hmm. I was visiting. Yeah, and uh, I think there is this chunk of game or this time period in the middle of the game when you're like when you're starting to get to the industrial age when it's kind of a slog it's like the early game is fun 
when you're exploring and uh, building the first cities. And when you reach a certain tech level, then it's fun again. But then there is this <laughs> there's, there's the uh, there's the steam engines and and cold war part in the middle. That's that's kind of uh, that, that sometimes goes on for a little bit too long. <laughs> like you can you can almost taste the new technologies, but they are not there yet. Yeah. You know what's coming. So like, oh, yeah, you you this. already you already know that uh, there is a better way of doing certain things. So it's like, no, I'm not gonna waste my resources on the railroads. I will save them up for maglevs. <laughs> 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 and often it's it's a gamble. Like if you don't uh, if you don't keep enough uh, uh, military units in your cities, they can be overrun. But then again. You don't have the resource to build enough anyway, so it's actually better to avoid conflict and so on. So it's a it's it's a balancing act, is what I'm saying. But so the, it's too but much music, strategy for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah like if you if you if you start thinking about the long game and the branch scenarios, then you can sort of wear yourself out. But uh, but as long as you're sort of just yep one more turn and go with the soundtrack then it's then it's wonderful. Nice. What else? What about the writing front? Well, yeah, we should probably talk about writing. <laughs> this, uh, writing game, uh, writing chat. Um. Yeah. Uh. Not too sure to be honest with you. I've been working on Outrunners. Um, which is outside of Chaos Nova. Please explain to our uh, viewers what is Outrunners. <laughs> Outrunners is a project that has sort of been in the works for a couple of years now. I'd I'd say, and I could, I've I've had a few false starts with it. Uh, tell me about the actual world. What's what's the what's the gist of the world? I don't want to know uh, how how long you've been talking. Uh, you've been working <laughs> on it. <laughs> tell tell about the world, the characters, and the I don't know the key elements. Okay. Um. Well, uh, the it, Outrunners is set in a sort of post-apocalyptic United Kingdom, where a a apocalyptic level weather event has occurred, and a sort of it's wiped a lot of people out and it's destroyed a lot of the buildings and all that kind of thing and wrecked an awful lot of the UK but there are survivors who made it to like the underground bunkers that we've got scattered around this country like the World War 2 bunkers the auxiliary listening mm. pods the Cold War bunkers that kind of thing the regional seats of government I've done an awful lot of research it's it's been good the research has been fantastic um, but some of the survivors like the bunkers have obviously got problems being that they were built in like the 40s and the 30s and all this kind of thing um like anchor one of the bunkers for example has got massive asbestos poisoning problem like so that's you don't really want to hang around anchor but there's not much much choice elsewhere um you because people like the, the obviously the roads are in shambles now vehicles are blocking the path destroyed buildings all that kind of thing so people are having trouble getting from place to place um and some of the people who dare to venture out onto these roads are called outrunners and they've salvaged vehicles they've uh, they've they've modified them in such a way that would be allow them to travel in uh, when the storm isn't hit in certain places, they can go out, explore the roads, go salvaging, do that sort of thing. And then when the storm comes back, they can just hide in the bunker again, you know. So, um, but the the group of outrunners that we follow in, uh, I don't know, can I show you this? Let me see if I can show you this. This is, so you see the wall over here. This is all Chaos Nova stuff. Mm -hmm. duh, 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 duh. This oh I uh, what do I need to oh I need to unplug this okay this is the outrunner oh. um so <laughs> there's a map of the UK here and these are all the factions and all kinds of crazy stuff so yeah um it it's good fun the I tried writing it and this is this is the original point I was trying to make that I tried writing it several times mm -hmm. I knew I had a really good I had a really good idea in my mind for Outrunners I knew what I wanted to do I had like the setting mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. was really exciting to me. Um, but I tr- I tried writing it once with a group called uh, Old Man Dan's Team, and they were cool. I enjoyed them, and they later turned up as characters in other Outrunner stories. But they weren't the main group I mm. wanted to write about. Um, took me out of my comfort zone as well because I wrote from Katie Carter's perspective, and she did diary entries. <laughs> so that the the start of the chapter would be like a diary entry from Katie. And then it would go into, like, uh, the scene around them, Mm. you know. So it it would start off, she'd be writing a diary, and then it would cut to, like, the third-person perspective. So there would be switching of uh, viewpoints. Yeah. And it was was fun to write. It was different. It It allowed me to do a certain amount of exposition without it sounding too like pushy if mm-hmm. you know what I mean which was which was nice to, and and it was good to sort of get an idea of that um, but then I moved on to another group uh, Riley's Runners and I and I love Riley's Runners right they're <laughs> they're my favorite but they come into Outrunners when a lot of things have already been established and you didn't really get to see the world develop or how people reacted to this new world that they found themselves in and how they are managing things like food and water and stuff like that in the bunkers and and that kind of thing Hmm. when when i did the riley's runners story every all of that was sort of dealt with there were no problems for the bunkers they had a steady supply they've got salvaging teams working all this sort of stuff um so that was it it felt i don't know i started writing riley's runners i was really enjoying it and then i got to a point where (laughs) the 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 team were gonna split up like they got asked to do something by some group and it was a case of some of the team were like well if we don't do this i'm leaving and another part of the the team was like well if you do this i'm leaving sort of thing (laughs) so and then i got to that point and it was a really hard problem to work through and i and i sort of drifted away from it and i started again with a character called ada who was who's who was like my name wasn't really Ada, but I'm trying to. Uh, now that the storm has happened, I'm wiping the slate clean and I'm reinventing myself and this kind of thing. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of interesting, but uh. but then 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 oh. then I I stumbled across a character called Izzy. Now Izzy, we we went back in time to just a few months after the storm hit so people are still establishing themselves and things are really problematic for all the survivors and that kind of thing and Izzy used to do a bit of urban exploration so she she knows about the bunkers and that sort of thing that's why she's in a but she was in a bunker taking a tour with a group when the storm hit which is why she was she managed to survive um so there's all that going on and it's really early, so you can see how things are established and the role she sort of plays in that. And she meets people from these other groups as they're sort of working their way up and working things out. And uh, and and this is the important thing, right? This is why none of the other stories work <laughs> and why this one has got a good chance. I wrote the whole thing, right? Oh, okay. I wrote the whole thing in notes and, like, fragments of conversations and, you know, if, if it was flowing the notes would develop into dirty text and I think I got all the way to chapter 29 and then I started refining it down I got rid of all the garbage and all this sort of shit I had a tangible story to write Mm -hmm. okay which gave me so much focus so much of a plan and with the others I never had that I had an idea Mm -hmm. with the others I was like oh well I kind of know where this wants to go I know where Riley's going uh, yeah, and it was like, well, Riley's runners end up doing this thing for the... There's a group called Kingsley Army. They're sort of like the remnants of the British Army. And they're, they're trying to put everything back together. They're trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to like, don't worry, we'll protect you, civil defence and all this and that. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't watched it. I haven't watched it yet. But, but yeah, so they end up... Riley's Rangers ended up getting recruited uh, by the army to do a special job because Mm. Riley's runners at this point are well established they've got a good reputation with people as for sort of getting the job done and you know not really messing about and you know they're they're a good team reliable and the Kingsland army send them with a group down to some 
or want to send them down to um, Spring Quarry, which is the largest underground bunker in the UK. Um, but every scout party they've sent there has gone missing. I think you could probably see why this story hasn't worked out, right? <laughs> <laughs> every scout team they've gone down there has gone missing, and it's sort of a big mystery. And they send Riley's runners. Um, or they want to send Riley's runners and then they have that big spat where they're like well if you do this I'm not going because Spring Quarry is like this big oh no stay away from there it's a bad place but the other the other two in the team are like well if we do this Kingsley and Army are going to sort us out with food we get a place to live we get to stop worrying about all this salvaging nonsense that we do we can just have we can have a peaceful life and not have to worry about driving around running away from the storm sort of thing um, so that happened and there was a big blowout argument between the group and it just felt awful do you know what I mean I was right now I was just like this is terrible why are you still me? Um so that that was that um, but now with, with Izzy Izzy the legend uh, yeah I think I've got a tangible story and I know where I'm going with it and we'll see but I was thinking I don't want alright me and you are working on Chaos Nova together mm. right that's, that's a good deal I'm very happy with that I don't know if working on Outrunners together. Like, it's just more work to add into the roster. I think what might be worth doing is I come up with a story, r write it to completion. So there's mm -hmm. something there, tangible, and then maybe give it to you for a proofread and see what you think. Or not a yeah, proofread, yeah, but can, like a... a yeah, a, a, we, can, a, we can see where this goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but basically not, not, go, not go in with the... Uh, with the expectation that I will do develop the so with the Chaos Nova stuff, what I'm basically doing is the developmental edit and and uh, world consultation. With this one, uh, I would go in knowing that I will I I won't delve into that. Yeah. Also, it, it might be worth uh, uh, you know. Keeping the keeping the mind open about including uh, potential new people who might be able to offer ideas or at least uh, I don't know uh, spring some thoughts based on mm -hmm. the material that's already there because that's I mean that's how it worked for me that's how it worked for me with the Chaos Nova material is that uh, initially I just started interacting with what's there. And then at some point uh, I started influencing what's there. Anyway. That's been awesome. It's been great <laughs> fun. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I have not been writing much. Uh, I I did manage to write down pages. Two <laughs> two pages. I I managed to write down the quick gist of the uh, uh, of my player character's childhood experience on one of the one uns unspecified Chaos Nova homeworld where she will be practicing the some sort of uh, winter ritual with her people which will sort of establish the some, some cultural things about her but that's but I haven't even been able to type these notes in yet, <laughs> so it it hasn't been very productive uh, I, winter for me. <laughs> it's down on paper, and that's the important thing. Well, yeah, there is that. I'm I'm looking forward to that story. When it when it comes through, it's going to be. I'm looking forward to it. I think we have come to a sort of logical endpoint. Yeah. This little summary of the winter. <laughs> I think I rambled so much that I've now <laughs> worn all my energy out and I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> spaced man, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Out of breath and that oh, <laughs> I need a rest. <laughs> I, I don't have much meaningful to add either. Uh, as per usual I have been scrolling the uh, uh, Pinterest the sort of eclectic Pinterest board on the side, just to sort of uh, have certain visuals in the 
peripheral of the vision but uh, not actively focusing on anything right now but yeah uh, let's get this year started yeah um, <laughs> work and stuff <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I, I guess we shall see you in a new um, either work session episode or another one of these chats. Thanks for watching. Bye.